From Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, North Korea demanding Panama release one of its ships. U.S. urging Egypt's new interim government to restore stability. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. North Korea is demanding that Panama release a Pyongyang flagship seized in Panamanian waters, saying the commandeered Cuban arms shipment on board was part of a legitimate deal. Pyongyang's foreign ministry described the cargo as aging Cuban weapons that North Korea agreed to under contract and to overhaul them and also called for the immediate release of the ship and its crew. Earlier Wednesday, Panama called on the United Nations to investigate the seizure as allegations swirl that the North Korean ship was smuggling arms in breach of UN sanctions. Supporters of deposed Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi are continuing their mass protest against the political transition that's underway in the country following the formation of a new interim cabinet. Several thousand demonstrators gathered Wednesday outside Cairo's main government buildings. Mr. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, speaking about the same time, said Egypt's new interim leaders need to restore stability following the ouster of President Morsi. Secretary Kerry told Arab League foreign ministers in Amman, Jordan, that Obama administration is not rushing to declare his removal a coup. More now from VOA's Scott Stearns. Kerry says Egypt is facing an extremely complex and difficult situation. Very clearly, order needs to be restored to the streets. Stability needs to be restored. Violence needs to be ended. Rights need to be protected. Jobs need to be created. And the country needs to be able to return to normal business, hopefully. He says the United States wants to see everyone participate in a political transition to move the country forward on a democratic path without fear of retribution. Scott Stern's VOA News, Amman. President Morsi remains under arrest, as do other leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is rejecting the authority of the interim administration now in control in Cairo. Secretary Kerry is in Amman trying to revive the Middle East peace talks. He says his meetings with Israeli and Palestinian officials have been able to narrow differences between the two sides. Security officials and Syrian state media say a Syrian political analyst known to back President Bashar al-Assad was assassinated in Lebanon. Gunmen killed Mohammed Daro Jamo on Wednesday outside his home in the southern coastal town of Serafan. State-run Syrian news agency blamed armed terrorists for killing Jamo, who often appeared as a commentator on Arab television channels. President Obama's nominee for U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations says the U.N. Security Council's response to the slaughter in Syria is a disgrace that history will judge harshly during her confirmation hearing before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee here in Washington, Samantha Power called Syria one of the worst cases of mass brutality she's ever seen. Power is expected to easily win Senate approval to the U.M. Post. The United Nations says it needs a record $13 billion to help an unprecedented 73 million people in 24 countries until the end of the year. Lisa Schlein reports. In December, the United Nations launched an appeal on behalf of 57 million people in desperate need of help in 24 countries. In just a few short months, the number of people needing help has increased to 73 million. The United Nations attributes this increase to the crisis in Syria, as well as the deteriorating situation in countries such as the Central African Republic and Mali. To date, the United Nations has received just more than $5 billion from its appeal. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. Officials in eastern India say at least 22 children have died after eating a free lunch cooked in the school's kitchen. 
Bihar state authorities say at least 27 other children were hospitalized after eating a meal that included rice and lentils Tuesday at a primary school in Masrak, which is about 90 kilometers north of Patna, the state capital. Education minister says a preliminary investigation indicates the food contained traces of a chemical used as an insecticide. Head of the U.S. Central Bank says the Federal Reserve will eventually reduce efforts to stimulate the U.S. economy, but do so only gradually when a strengthening in economy makes it clear that less help is needed. Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke is testifying before congressional committees, did so on Wednesday, and will continue on Thursday. For more on these stories, go to our website at voanews.com. I'm Steve Norman, VOA News.